Hi everybody, how's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing all right. Um, we're doing our study on the book of Fervent. If you've not joined us yet, um, we're going through this book. It's talking about fervent prayer. Uh, welcome to our channel, Sharibi's Buddies. Uh, we also have a Facebook group page for ladies called Sheree and Sisters in Christ. So uh, if that's something you think you might want to be interested in, um, just uh, send us a, uh, a request to join and I'll approve your request. Uh, we do scripture writing and just uh, pray for each other and do things like that. So um, anyway, I'm going to get started with this. I don't have a lot of battery left in my camera and I want this is so important. Uh, we're in strategy seven called your purity. I'm going to be reading a lot out of this because there's a lot of good stuff in here and what it says in here is basically what I think I would probably try to say anyway, but it says it a lot better in the book <laughs> than what I could come up with. So anyway, um, it says, if I were your enemy, I'd tempt you towards certain sins, making you believe they're basically, even biologically, unavoidable. I'd study your tendencies and proclivities till I learned the precise conditions that make you the most likely to indulge them. And then I'd strike right there, again and again, wearing you down, because if I can't separate you from God forever, I can at least set you at odds with him for the time being. And that's, uh, that's the way that Satan works. He tries to tempt us with, if we're on a diet, we need to eat this right here that we're not supposed to have, you know. Um, just different things. Um, uh, watching a show on TV that maybe we shouldn't watch, because there's shows on TV, my goodness, I can't believe they're on TV. Huh. I was on a regular channel the other day, and I'm like, what did they just say? I was, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, kids are probably watching this. It's no wonder our, our world is, ugh, like it is. I, I don't know. But anyway, it's just like when, uh, when we, uh, moms and our moms, or when we tell our kids, don't touch that. You don't know where that's been, you know. It's the same way with sin and, uh, temptations from Satan, you know, um, we need to be telling each other and helping each other out, saying, don't touch that, you know, don't, you don't know where that's been, or, you know, don't go in there, or you don't need to be doing that, or get off that channel, or, you know, whatever. We've got to kind of help each other out, too, because Satan will definitely pull us in the wrong direction. The enticing, I'm on page 120, if you've got the fervent book. It says, that enticing temptation that tickles your curiosity and piques your interest and placates your personal proclivities has been festering in the devil's sick, sinister mind all morning, all week, maybe even all year. He's just sitting there soaking up the vileness and the filth, cruelty and conspiracy, waiting for the right time, the moment when you're most weakened and susceptible to attack. But once he's cleaned it up for presentation and sliding it meticulously into view, You'd think it was the shiniest, most desirable bit of unclaimed satisfaction you'd ever seen. He sets it out there where your eyes can't help but to be drawn toward it. At least you know to pick it up and look at it, feel it, play with it. Maybe it's a new cell phone that you really don't need but you're kind of wanting, but you really need that money for other things. Or, you know, like I said, it could be food or whatever, you know, whatever it is. The moral compromise, the unhealthy habit, the enticing addiction, the allure towards sexual immorality. Do you think their uncanny ability to show up is just by happenstance? When you're exhausted or hungry or lonely, you think it's all coincidence? <laughs> no, it ain't coincidence, it's Satan. He wears you down, he knows where your weakness is and he plays on that because he knows if, you get, if he gets you to do things that God won't like, then he's thinking God won't like you. Now, God won't like what we're doing, but I won't say God don't like us. He might be disappointed in us for going down the roads that we shouldn't go down in our life. But, you know, Satan just wants to keep driving that wedge right in between, you know. Look at what we know from Satan's temptation of uh, Christ in Matthew 4. Remember that story? The devil came out into the wilderness where Jesus had been fasting for 40 days at a time, or uh, physically speaking, that the Lord was hungry and alone and tired and depleted. What better setup and situation to make the suggestion of, well, bread? 
I mean, I don't know about you, but if somebody puts a warm piece of bread or a roll in front of me with some real butter, <laughs> I'm so hooked. Oh my gosh, I have no self-control. I love bread, I love it. I love it with butter on it. I love it when we go to the restaurants and you get the free rolls or whatever. I just love, I just love bread. I just do bread and butter. But uh, I don't even have to be hungry. I mean, I like bread and butter, ice cream. You know, the things that tempt us all the time when we don't need to be eating it. But that's the way the enemy works. That's his way, precision, personalization, and persistence. He's always scouting for what Luke's gospel describes as the opportune time in 413, the moment when a well-placed temptation is most likely to be its most irresistible. So you can stop at the place where you first recognize the scent of temptation in the air, and before you touch it, remember, remember where it's been. Have you been there and done that? Do you know who's behind it, which would be Satan? And if it's one of those repeat temptations that you've been battling against for years, remember the places it's taken you, the places it always ends up taking you. Because as soon as you say yes to that temptation, you're headed right smack there again, and right smack dab in the middle of it. And you know it, but you gotta have that willpower we talk about sometimes to say no. No to that bread and butter. You know, no to those cigarettes. No to that Diet Pop. You know, no to that soda. Whatever it is, you know, uh, no. You know, stay away from those toxic people because they're no good for you. Oh, but look how much fun they're having and blah, blah, blah. Well, sorry. Christians have fun too, and you don't have to have that to have fun. If you need all that to have fun, then you got a bigger problem than you think. <laughs> Sin has consequences, always has and always will. We know that no matter who you are, you know sin has consequences. And uh, obedience to God garners intimacy and nearness, divine blessing and favor, always. And disobedience creates a sense of distance and loss, grief and regret, always. Sometimes the consequence of caving to temptation are practical and tangible changing your daily experience drastically enough in certain cases to fundamentally affect the rest of your life. But no matter how immediately noticeable the cost, the ripple effects of sin always affect your connection with the Father. And this, this is exactly your connection. This is exactly what the enemy is hoping that you will do. This is exactly what the enemy is hoping for. It's why he is so personalized and meticulous in his advances to tempt you. Impurity weakens your praying, which in turn weakens your power. When our lives are not aligned with the teaching of Scripture and the transforming works of the God's Spirit, when we're resisting his wise, loving instruction concerning our lifestyle and attitudes, our prayer closets become more like soundproof rooms. I mean, we have got to follow God. And we have to be righteous. Righteousness matters. We have to be strategic in our prayers. The devil's strategy is to make us believe impurity is normal, that nobody gets hurt if we just keep a few forbidden things on hand and enjoy them from time to time. That's no big deal. But if we were steadily engaged in fervent prayer with our strategy counteracting his strategy, we'd see in a snap that unrighteousness is not no big deal. It's a house of horrors. It is totally upside down, the upside down way to live. Impure living, impure thinking, impure relationships, impure affections, upside down living creates the perfect environment and breeding ground for demonic activity. And unrighteousness disrupts our peace. It scares away any lasting sense of rest and contentment. It spoils what could otherwise be enjoyable. It complicates experiences that were meant to be nothing but pleasure and blessings. We can knowingly create this kind of an environment, that kind that invites the devil to make himself right at home, and then we blame God for whatever sense of distance we may feel from him. Uh, we have to choose righteousness. We have to pray fervently. You know, we can't play, blame God because we're m getting ourselves distanced from God because we feel guilty for what we have been doing. We feel guilty for the things that we do that... Uh, you know, we shouldn't be done in the first place. 
we have to have willpower. You know, you can't just sit back and expect God to do everything. We have to have a say-so and a, a place in this whole scenario, too. You know, if things are always given to you, you don't appreciate them type of thing. Uh, yeah, you know, I, did, I didn't eat that bread. Hey, good for me. I didn't eat that bread, Satan. How about that? You know, put that in your pop and smoke it. <laughs> you know, I didn't do this. I didn't hang out with those people. I didn't go over there. I turned over here. I went to my car and read my Bible on my lunch hour instead. I, I didn't get into the gossip mill over here in the break room. I didn't, you know, we have a choice and we have to make good choices because bad choices have bad consequences most of the time. Because not only does <clears throat> Excuse me. Because not only does our prayer deflect the enemy, but our purity deflects the enemy too. God calls you to purity because he wants your heart protected and at rest, inhospitable to the devil and his intentions. God wants your full God wants you full of power and confidence and spiritual spiritual vitality. <laughs> he wants you free to bless and encourage others to receive and celebrate his goodness, to become such a stick of dynamite prayer warrior that Satan don't even want to even know when you get up to get your coffee in the morning. He don't want to know you're getting out of bed because he knows that fervent prayer is coming. And, um, you know, it don't mean we'll never do anything wrong again. I mean, we're not built for that. I mean, we're human. Uh, sin still hides in the nicks and crannies of our lives, of our flesh, and they're magnetically drawn toward the allure of temptation. But hey, purity leads us to fervent prayer. And fervent prayer leads us to purity. And when we start putting this cycle to work, building momentum like a spiritual turbine surrounding our hearts with the nearness of God's protection, we strip Satan of the power to rope us down to the same old cycle of sin that we've always known. We say to him in so many words, can't touch this because you can't. Uh, we got the say so in our lives, not Satan. And, uh, and that's what we're taking charge of, our lives. And uh, temptation and things like that, well, you know, there's no place for that in our lives. We, uh, we need to just uh, worship God and, and do things like that. Um, we, can't, uh, <laughs> we can't depend on God to do it all for us, that we need to take charge of our own lives and pray to God to help us and let that devil know that he ain't welcome around here and that he can take his temptations some where else to somebody else because we've been there done that ended up on the wrong road and we don't want to go all the way back and start all over again <laughs> i'm so glad you joined me today i so am enjoying this i hope you are too i hope you're getting something out of this i'm no college educated person or nothing i'm just trying to meddle through like i've said and trying to learn and hopefully you can learn with me and you all teach me stuff but feel free to put anything in the comments that you want if there's anything you want to know about me, feel free to put that in there, too. Uh, I'm doing a get to know me, so, you know, feel free to put any questions down there, and I'll try to get them answered for you. But anyway, I want, I want you to remember to live, love, laugh, and laugh some more, because laughter's the best medicine. And we'll see you real soon. Thanks a lot for joining me. And remember to like this video and subscribe. And I've got other videos on here that might interest you, too. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.